before we get out of here, there's one more kind of hot topic. Let's let's hit John Ross on the way out. Little Johnny Ross. Little John Le- Ross. They cut LaFell. John well, Ross got a bad rap. I'll jump in here because there was no I don't know if anybody was beating the drum as hard as don't pay up for John Ross last year. The price back tag tag was too high. It was anybody but Ross in the first round of your rookie draft. But now I'm all about some cheap John Ross. I don't know how you couldn't right. be. I don't think I don't know how you couldn't be excited about cheap John Ross. I mean, he's currently at one forty three in DLF July ADP, which I mean I'm sure you're gonna see That's that's outdated now. At least around not only does he have the uh, the look at me, I'm still fast and quick videos out of training camp. Now LaFell's cut. LaFell's so cut. That's which probably basically 20, what spawned this conversation. Yeah, exactly. That's 20 spots outdated at least. I mean, you're going to like two rounds to be 24 spots to be safe, which is around the Cam Meredith, uh, Rashard Matthews kind of area where he would be going now as opposed to where he was going uh, before. And I don't necessarily have a problem taking a shot on John Ross there. I mean, you can't teach how fast he is. Yeah. He did other things besides be really fast at Washington. Oh, for in sure. That, in the uh, one season where he really did work. He lined up all over the field, played in the slot. He's good with the ball in his hands. He returned kicks. I mean, he had, to, he had to come back to a bunch of balls in college because the quarterback just couldn't get the ball out in front of him. He's so fast. Right, um, and I'm 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 with you. I wasn't drafting John Ross. John Ross is on none of my teams. He was in nowhere near any of my teams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I took him in our rookie mock it up before he fuck it up at like one nine or one ten or something. He just I, somebody had to take him right, and I tried to come on and defend him a bit, and it didn't it didn't hurt that he ran a four two two, and had was like the eighth overall pick I think in the draft that year. Um, right, not not so good in his past as the injuries. He had two meniscus injuries, an ACL tear, micro, micro fracture surgery. He sprained his knee in the preseason last year, and then had a shoulder injury too. I think yeah. A shoulder surgery and then uh sprained his knee again in week two causing him to miss four games they basically shut him down for the whole year i don't know if they were mad at him or if he was really just banged up um but he never really got his chance he had one rush for 12 yards and a fumble he's got negative fantasy points on his <laughs> on right. his resume right now <laughs> not right. good not good for for old John Ross, but to be cheap John Ross, baby. Cheap John Ross is on the up, and maybe before the end of the season, maybe he comes in and lights the world on fire in the preseason, and he jumps up another twenty, thirty spots. Yeah. Um, but I mean, so giving up a two to get John Ross? Well, I guess that yeah, that's my next question here is that if it's probably tough to pull him off some people's team because he was the first rounder, like you were saying, and Jay Wayne alluded to. Um, before I say, would you trade him for or? Ask the question of would you trade him for it too? If you're the owner of John Ross and you got burned by him last year, are you willing to get some of your investment back and take that too for John Ross? Not, not me. Yeah, I'm, I, I mean, even me. I, I want to see it now. I mean, like it. You've seen, yeah, the arrows yeah, turning around, you, right? You, you've seen other players that gotten kicked down and come right back to life. Look at what Devonte Adams is now. And he he didn't even get he didn't even have he's not a first round draft pick was he he might have been late first round draft pick I think Devontae Adams was a high draft pick but he wasn't John Ross high and he didn't have that type of uh, a plot you know just fanfare coming into the league and now he's you know top ten ADP wide receiver not uh, not overall but he's in your top ten of eight and obviously he runs around with Aaron Rodgers and not you know second round Andy Dalton pick. second round so mid mid third mid second mid second. You know, but so yeah, I mean, like the guys like that, examples like that happen all the time of the receiver. You know, hey, remember three years? It takes them three years to get here. You know, cheap John Ross. I, if I, I'm not, I'm going to pass up the next year's second opportunity. Now, if I'm sitting in a draft this year and it's an early second, and I got a chance to get, you know, take sw- switch switch ships, and I can jump on the Anthony Miller ship or somebody like that. Uh, the Cortland Sutton ship, I might jump off my ship, the John Ross ship, and jump onto one of these new ships that, that are a little sparkly and it hadn't had, hadn't crashed into the rocks yet because obviously John Ross's ship sank last year. But it's coming back around. I would I wouldn't sell him for the next year's two. I probably would sell him for the very early this year's two in a draft if I had well, that's if, what if I had I the this, opportunity this year's two. Well, I would I, I would take an early two to get one of those guys on my team. I I, I guess. <clears throat> I guess I'm fine with you if you want to give up, you know, if someone's offering you an early two for John Ross, yeah, I mean, I guess I'd, I'd probably take that. Um, but back to back to having John Ross, 
I'm not opposed to drafting a, a wide receiver in the first round of a rookie draft. I know, you know, Big Co, there's no chance. Casey, maybe. But for the most part, you guys are all running backs, and, and I get it. There and comes I'm down a point where it. I feel the talent is broken, and I, I don't mind taking a stab. Right, like this year at 1-9, if and the first guy like running Corey backs Davis, go off the I have ball. no problem with you taking a, a top pick on Corey Davis. I believe in the talent there. I got right. no problem with that. Me and neither. But years ago, I mean, I just, I've been burnt by the back end first round. You know, I took Amari Cooper years ago, and that, that was great. That felt fine. But then, you know, you take, I took Nelson, Nelson Aguilar, Aguilar in a league. That didn't feel, same Coming league. back around. That, that didn't feel so good. Couple, took a couple of years. He's come back around. Uh, right. Took and Tyler so Boyd. Point. Took Tyler Boyd take it, chasing the potential next uh, Antonio Brown guy. And not every you know? rookie class is as good as, as right. the next one, right? Yeah. I mean, we've had some, some ones that spoil us. And then when we have another one that isn't so great, we're all mad. But like that that's my point there is the whole Nelson Aguilar thing is if I'm taking a wide receiver in the first round I, like you can't be expecting some prominent res, uh return you know on return on investment in year 1 right so if I spent a, a first on John Ross last year a late first maybe there's there, I can't just bail this year there's no way I got to hold it I got to wait and and then and now when you see you read these things and the arrows turning around there's no way you could just sell John Ross right now for like a late two. If you want to, if you say I want to, I'm I'm done with John. I want to take a stab on Cortland or Anthony Miller. I mean, I don't think you're getting Cortland in the early two. He's probably late one. So I mean, you, you got Anthony Miller, Michael Gallup, Depends. James Washington. You could get in the early one. Neam Hines, Gasecki. You want to if you want to jump into that early part of the second round because I think this class is pretty deep. I think that's equivalent to like an early or late first a couple years ago when you had to take Tyler Boyd or CJ pro or whoever you were taking in, you know, a few years back. Um, well, I like to equate some of this stuff to actual stock market because I like to dabble. But yes, you you don't if you don't sell, you didn't lose as a paper loss until you'd sell, right? Obviously, in fantasy football, you actually put these things to work instead of like in the stock market. You can't use that money unless you sell to to actually to grab it. But like you know, you you have your Price, your your value almost went to zero on John Ross, and it's completely turned around in a couple of weeks here. I see what you're saying. If you've had him the whole time, you haven't lost anything yet, so why sell now for cheap? I, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with that. I would jump over to one of those higher-end wide receivers in this year's class. But my thing... They haven't my, blown it yet. One of the, right, they haven't cracked, hit the rocks yet. But one of the things that I've learned in my dynasty career is the way that you can get catches and the way that you can get value on older receivers makes me I, I just I I'm going to look for that one year return on investment in a rookie draft via running back that I think could break out or is in line for some duties here or duties. taking that first round pick putting him together with another player or just trading him outright for somebody who's proven already I'm, I'm looking for that first round pick to return me some value sooner than being like hey I'm gonna take this wide receiver and just ride it out yeah Nelson Aguilar came back around you know, to be determined if some of the other wide receivers comes back around, you know, the Kevin White's of the world and, and, um, Treadwell's of the world. And if see if those guys come back around and you know, this ship might have sailed on Brashad Perriman, you know, there's plenty of guys right. that we could go back and we can look for that ship way out there and we don't see him coming in yet, you know? So I'm, I'm trying to do something different. There's plenty my first of running round backs. Picks. Do that too. No doubt. Backs. No doubt. And late, yeah, last couple of years of running backs have, have really spoiled you on their return on investment. But, you know, but that's TJ Yeldon was a, it was a mid to late coming first back round around, pick coming back ago. around, but yeah. nowhere near held that value going Mira forward. Abdullah. Like no lost it like crazy. TJ right. Yeldon's trying to come back around here and he would, he will if, if Fournette gets hurt, but you know, so, and he's, he's, got, he's got free agency next year. So who knows? Um, but yeah, I I I don't mind hanging on to John cheap John Ross. I'm 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 I'm, and I, I I'm give buying up, cheap I give John up a Ross. Late two. I don't think there's anyone in the late second round right now unless someone's just falling. I mean, once 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 Gasecki and the and the those wide receivers fall off and John uh, James Washington's gone and Hines is gone and like it's kind of no man's land. I'd definitely give a mid to late two to to, to get Ross to get a, a last year first oh, round sure. talent and put. I would definitely give that up to get him. Yeah, yeah you got to give it a swipe. Yeah, I like that. If once those guys are kind of gone, those those uh, you know, everybody knows those names. Once everybody knows your name is off, right? And you're just stabbing around. And I'd, I'd give up a two next year. I mean, not knowing what my two is gonna be, I'd give up a two to get him. Like a 2020 to, or 2019 2019 too. too. Oh, give it up. For sure. Try it. Buy cheap John Ross. Right. All right. Well, you want to get us out of here, Jay Wayne? Yeah, that'll wrap up today's show. Thanks for listening and joining us. If you're on iTunes, 
definitely hit that little five star review for us, man. That would really help us out. It's the best. Thank you so much for everyone that's already done it. We're on any of your platforms of choice, Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Definitely go over to YouTube, hit subscribe on that thing. We got videos going up on the reg, breaking up the podcast a little bit. You can get a little more granular search. Um, head over to our website, theffdynasty.com. You can check out all of our content, all the posts and videos that we've made and, and access to each episode. We got rankings that we're trying to we bring you more and more of those as we go. And then uh, in the Patreon, if you want this extra episode and you want access to the after show and you want to be able to hit us up with all your personal questions and get get prompt replies, got to go over to Patreon. Um, it's not it's not free to produce this podcast. It costs money to upload the thing. It costs money to produce it. We got really nice equipment to bring you good quality. We want to evolve as well. We want to bring you video, an actual video of us all, but that that's not free either. Yeah, we're um, not trying to get it all back in one piece. We're trying definitely to get not. five bucks a person per month. I mean, that's, that's right. peanuts. So, right. you know, we talk about buying people for peanuts. We're going to continue to tell you who to buy for peanuts for right. peanuts. You give us five bucks a month. It's right. One, it's one hot latte. We're still giving you the regular free show, uh, but we're going to give you a little bit more, give you some extra stuff, some exclusive stuff that no one else is going to be able to hear unless you join the family. So come over and be a part of the community and, and let's keep this thing rolling into the season and just keep dominating because we, we hear good responses. We hear from you guys a lot and how, how well our strategies have helped you out and we want to continue to do that because we're here for you. It's 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 it, You don't always have someone that you can bounce ideas off of. This is the reason why we started this podcast, the three of us, because we can just kind of call each other up and talk through a scenario, talk through what you're feeling about a certain situation and how do yeah, you feel about develop it. Develop opinions. Right, and then really kind of take it all in from different aspects and hopefully come away with something valuable. And so we want to be that outlet for you who may not have someone else that you can bounce those ideas off of. And, and we do a decent job of replying on social media, but we're not the best. Patreon is going to be where it's at. So definitely head over to that. You can find the access through our website, theffdynasty.com, or you can head over directly to Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash the FF dynasty. So thanks so much for listening. That's going to put a wrap on today's show. Till next time, you've been listening to Mary to the Game.